Yo, motion designers. I am trying to do better with my camera rigs at the moment, and I've made a few distinctions, made a new tool, which I wanted to share with you all, and also just put this out there to get some feedback and advice, because I think everyone does cameras differently, and I've seen people with some really cool rigs, and the movement side of stuff I'm still struggling with, but this is saving me and an editor that I'm working with a ton of time, so I wanted to share it with you. So. For After Effects users, you know about this, that After Effects, well, it's becoming properly 3D now, but it's been 2.5D for ages. And there's this technique, obviously, when you're when you're doing motion where you can you can zoom around scenes like, like this, basically. This is just a 2D scene, which when it's 2D looks like this. And then you can see that you've got sort of depth of field here and, and, and bokeh and stuff like that going on. And I use this a lot in Glide. You can see like a really simple example of just, you know, this is literally just text on a screen, but just going up the top with this nice camera movement gives you a sense of like, oh, this is like much more of an, a moment in, in the film. And it's a really nice technique to use. And I'm forever like trying to show UI in slightly elevated ways. So this is Glide, the company I work at. Glide, um, I'm on brand today. And when you capture this, this is great for tutorials and stuff like that. But if you just put a bit of angle and a bit of camera and a bit of depth on it, it just like, I hate to use the word, but it, it pops, right? So um, let me show, but the, but t typically the way that I used to set this up was just so time consuming. You'd be like, in fact, I got, let me, where are my notes here? Yeah, I would, I would create a camera. I would dial in the camera settings. I'd create a focus null. I'd connect the focus null to the position of the camera. I'd restrict the null Z depth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. I've solved it for you. But basically there's a script that I've just done, which does all of that. And I honestly think it's saving me six minutes every time I set up a camera. It's like that long and it goes like this. So all I do every time I need to set up 2.5D with exactly the spef specifications that I want is I go like this, command camera rig one, boom, all done. I just make sure that my layer is 3D, which it is, and then boom, I can just like pan around and move stuff. So, so right now this is like really cool because I used to be like changing my zoom and focal length to make sure that you didn't get that compression and stuff like that. So I've zoomed in and now I'm like, okay, well, I need more focus over here. So I'll grab my focus null and I will literally just drag it. And you can see it's got a kind of a weird drag and that's because I can't drag it accidentally on Z. It will always stay on that thing. Look, even if I drag it out here, it just always stays there, which I find so valuable because I'm always I'm always doing this on 2D layers. I'm always like, I wanna focus over here on a 2D layer because it's how I work. So so that's there. So let's say we've got this, this pull from here, right? I'm gonna add, I'll go to the camera, point of interest, position, and then let's say across four seconds, we're gonna pan over and go down here and we're gonna focus on this, this thing here, right? The problem is, is our focus is now way up there. So let's grab that focus null and drag it over to here. Great, so now we've got this move where the focus ends up like perfect at the end. We can keyframe all of that. It's really, really good. And then the final thing is just setting up some kind of easy controls on this camera rig null here. I only ever want to control the zoom, the aperture, and the blur level, even if I do. I mean, I hardly ever do, but if I do, I wanna just reach for those there. You do still, now that we have the properties panel here, you can like easily, you can easily grab those. But you know, I just prefer having it on here, and these are keyframe. Uh, these are there are expressions on each of these that they control the deeper levels there. Just because for me, when I look at that, if I'm moving fast, it kind of I have to look each time for the things that I want, and the things I only ever want are zoom, aperture, and blur level. So anyway, here's the script. Um, let me just go to oh, here's me editing this video. <laughs> uh, so I so jackvaughan.com slash tools is an area where I'm going to be documenting a lot of the different things that I use day to day, whether it's just like the work tools, things like Raycast, the extensions, a whole load of different things. Um, but I'm starting with After Effects scripts, so which is why this page looks so ridiculously empty right now. Um, hopefully when you arrive at this in future, you'll see more. But basically, if you click on After Effects scripts or just indeed go to tools slash AE scripts, you'll see me starting to document these here because if I just show you my Visual Studios code, um, you can see that there is a lot of stuff that I am playing around with in After Effects. And uh, most of it is written by uh, my friend um, Copilot <laughs> with me working because I'm not a true uh, developer. Um, but it has been really interesting to me because I have a tiny little bit of uh, background in playing around with JavaScript and expressions and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes you get to these interesting points where, because I've iterated, as you can see here, uh, four different times with this thing. I mean, it, it iterated a lot more than that, but um, it's really interesting getting to these times where actually the AI gets stuck and you have to like diagnose it yourself. Um, but I'm gonna try and share more of these, um, some really useful stuff here. And the last thing I would say is just, yeah, get yourself a launcher. Um, 
I'm using Quick Menu, which is actually very old software for After Effects now, but Edgar, uh, forgotten his second name, is the developer of Quick Menu, and he's working on a new one right now, uh, which is really exciting, um, and I'll try and do a video on that when it comes out. But um, launchers for your own custom scripts is like the way to go when you're trying to speed up your workflows in After Effects. So I hope this is useful for you, um, and let me know the way that you might improve this. One of the things I know I could look into more is like proper camera rigs, like you know, dollies, pulls, zooms, all of that stuff. And maybe there are controls that we could work on together to put into here. Because what I often find is like with a move like this, you know, actually maybe I want some of the move to end here, but I want it to keeping, you know, be zooming back at the same time as it stops moving to the right. And actually we need, maybe we need to separate stuff because all I'm doing right now is I'm using the, the camera controls in After Effects and keyframing the, um, just the point of interest and position. Uh, and I have a feeling that there's a lot more control to find there. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on this and what you might add to this script and then maybe I'll just add it and uh, we can work on it together.